death be not proud. You smell that, you ignorant pigs? That's arrogance coming back to the world of hobby wango tango. A lot of people liked my last tutorial on how to paint a Roman legionary, so this is a tutorial on how I painted my Kings of War trolls for my goblin list. Now this is a Mantic model, so uh, that's a huge advantage there. There still aren't a lot of these painted yet, and they're just barely starting to come through on Google Images, so I hope that this helps you. I'm kind of locked in the way that I've done this one, because all of my trolls were done this way. That means this one has to be done the exact same way. So we'll go over the shopping list, and we'll come back. So as usual, we're going to start off with Mr. Orc Face. I think we're doing kind of good. We're going to bring the camera out just a little. I think we're good. And I think we're going to be able to see Mr. Troll a lot better. Um, he's very dark. All right, so that's the focusing phase. All right, so we're going to go over our shopping list. Uh, for the base on the Troll Flesh, we got Io Sangreen from the P3 range. All right. Next, we got Bolt Gun Metal, Charred Brown, Codex Gray. For the next layer on the flesh, we got War Boss Green. And the final layer is 50 50 with War Boss Green and Moot Green. Mephiston Red for the fabric. Evil Scarlet, um, Evil Sun Scarlet for the highlight. Our gold will be consisting of a base of Balthazar gold and glorious gold from the game color range. Our silver highlight is Mithril silver. To highlight the rock and stone, we're going to be using Rakarth Flesh and Tan Earth. And those kind of go on top of the Codex Gray wherever there's stone. And it's also a, and our Rakarth Flesh is uh, also the color for the base on the uh, bandages which we use to lash the uh, sticks. Uh, the rocks to the sticks, basically. This is Bone Highlight for Tooth and Claw, and the bandages that go around the sticks to bind the rock to the uh, club. And then this is what highlights our base for the models, what, with, which is what it's standing on. It's uh, Basically, we've already taken the liberty of putting the Scorch Brown on. This is what highlights the Scorch Brown. And then um, this helps build the wood, and this helps build the wood. And then this also helps build the wood that I will be using. With that said, and the shopping list complete, we're going to start our first colors. Just sort of going around and stating the obvious, I've already taken the P3 green. Oh, which is Gnarls green, sorry. I've already taken that and base coated the flesh, as you can see. Then I went and I put bolt gun metal all over the parts that I wanted to be metal. I made the club brown already, and as you can see, I dry brushed gray on top of the brown to uh, get my rock to pick out a little bit. I've already painted the base and the sand all there, scorched brown. So we're going to start with our next step here, which is going to be the last metallic that's going to go on, which is Baltazar Gold. So here we go. Let's just get into the thick of this really fast here with our Balthazar Gold. We're using the Reaper Pro Paint Size 2 and I've decided to make the shoulder plaids the gold here. Usually what I do is I put a little bit of brown on these, but I forgot to, so... I'm just going to go down and then we're going to paint these pads gold. And I think I'm going to do one more in gold just so he pops out a little bit more because they some of them just got pure steel some of them got gold but I'm just basically following the same pattern of how the other nine are painted and these ones are 10 11 and 12 
that are being painted right now. So they've got to they've got to kind of look like the same. So like again, uh, I'm sorry for that because they're already uh, locked in this way. So we're just going to make sure that we get a healthy base coat of the gold around. And I really like this Balthazar gold color. It goes on with like one or two brush strokes. Very easy color to work with. Very good base coat for gold. If you mix it 50-50 with Glorious Gold, you can also get a very good bronze color as well. Alright, let's see. Is there any other portion? Nah, we'll stop there with the gold. And uh, we'll be right back. All right, the next really big step is the War Boss Green, and that's going on all of his flesh as the uh, second layer. So we're going to go around the higher point. Ooh, we got to wipe some of that off. Ugh, I am not with it today, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of incentive to make videos right now. I'm just tired. It's Christmas. Everybody's doing uh, family stuff, I'm sure, and it's really hard to get a game in when it's when it's Christmas, but hopefully that'll clear up and I won't have as many problems with the holidays. Right now, this is just the last guy and I didn't even feel like making the video for it. <laughs> I'm just like, screw that, I'm tired, I don't care. There we go. We got a healthy coat on there. Sometimes you gotta layer it up. You don't wanna you don't wanna leave the brush stroke, so if it's starting to smear you just come back to it because this stuff doesn't take very long to dry. Can you cover up any gold that you might have done as a matter of fact? Yeah. Let's see here, what else? So, let's move around and get into his arms a little bit. Build those up. And you always want to work either left or right. So it looks like we've already chosen to go to my left, so we're going to have to just continue on this salient until we get a good healthy layer in the abdominal muscles on the other arms. And it's going to be a little bit time consuming, so I'm going to hurry up and do this off camera. And we'll be right back, but let's get the face real quick while we're here. Behind the jaw. There we go. Oof, we got a little. Don't know how well you can see where I'm going with that, but I'm gonna get in there just to the part we can see. Highlight the neck muscles a little bit. Get up there on top of the cranium. This one's wearing a steel plate on his head, so you don't have to do a whole lot. But that's why I like these trolls. These trolls are pretty awesome. A lot of people don't like the little legs. I think they're kind of hilarious how they got the little gorilla legs and the huge, huge upper torsos. Trolls, they don't have to make sense, you know. You have to just define what... In a day and age where you just have to define what is legally distinct from something else that someone has already done, I think they're pretty solid models. So we'll be back. Because of all the conflicting angles that I've got to paint in between, um, I had to kind of just do it off camera really quick and make sure I get a good even coat of the War Boss Green on the model and everything. And you can see just how much more that model comes out once the second layer of green goes on. It goes from being a dark, uh, gnarls green to uh, a more, uh, I don't know, uh, I'd, I'd have to say a more goblin green, yeah. That's the color word I'm looking for. So he comes out, you got his metallics, everything is clear on this model. So we're going to go through a couple of dumb, tiny-minded, monotonous colors and get them done. So one thing we're going to start next is our wood. And I always start my wood with, uh, this is how I painted up my, uh, my Goblin Doom Divers way back in the day, is this combination here. I start with a Bestial Brown Dry Brush. And I just sort of build that up on the staff here. So the whole thing's just going to appear bestial brown, but I'm just going to drag it wherever there's wood. As you can see there. Through. Put right there. I'm going to get a little bit more Make sure I get up the tops here. Just wherever it's wherever the club isn't covered. This, this bestial brown color is going to go on as well. And I'm going to 
go all the way in here and back. Don't know how well you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm just going in and I'm getting the wood on. I'm going to go up underneath, get the wood there. And that's one of the things we're going to be doing for the stick. Next, we're going to be inspecting the uh, rope. And the rope's going to get a little bit of this color as well. And uh, we'll be... So the rope, you, I don't know how well you'll be able to make that out. goes right along here. We're just going to go... We're just going to touch our rope with this stuff. We're going to come down. Dry brush the rope and just dry brush the fabric real quick. There we go. And then that's it there. And that's it for Bestial Brown. We'll be right back with the next color. So next we're going up with our uh, tan flat with our uh, tan earth color here from uh, the Vallejo range. And uh, we're not going to need a lot of this. What we're going to do with it is we're just going to put a little bit in our palette. And we're going to be switching to our Winsor Newton size 4. As you can see I get a lot of use out of this one. And this is usually what I use to dry brush my uh, flesh and stuff with when I'm when I'm highlighting and everything. But what we're going to do is we're going to get this on. Just going to go over the rock real quick with this, and just all over. We're also going to hit the we're also going to start picking out the bandages with this too. All right, so it's a good little uh, pre coat for the base. But we can we can get in there close to the rock and just make sure that the rocks get highlighted very good and uh, you can see what it's doing there come back in alright brush it on the rock really fast and then what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush it across the base very lightly so after we get done with the graveyard earth we'll be back this is default the graveyard earth color if you remember the old citadel days but it's called tanned earth So as you can see, the graveyard earth went on the rock. It kind of just brought it up a little bit. Went on the rear here. That's a pretty bit. That's a pretty big highlight area right there. So it got a lot. It went on the base. I dragged it across the rope a little bit. I went in there and I dragged it across the rope. Oh, you can't see past my big fat thing, finger, but I just dragged it across the rope. I put a little bit on the teeth, and then uh, see the bandages right here or the leather straps. It went across the leather straps as well to kind of bring those out one more shade. The next color is uh, the Rackarth Flesh color. And uh, this will go around the bandages on the model. Not to mention it'll go on the fingernails as well to bring those up for the, for, for the base of the fingernails. Um, it's not going to go on the rope. As a matter of fact, the last color to go on the rope that's just going to be dotted on is Menoth White but we're getting to that one. So, one color at a time though, and as you can see here, rub some of this off. If you have too much on your brush, you probably do. I'm just, as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling straight from the pot. I am, it's, for me, it's a lot harder to paint one miniature by itself than it is to paint a, a group of miniatures. Doing this is very taxing for me because usually I'm working in and out of uh, the spaces. Um, the other two, I actually painted together simultaneously. They were done side by side. So doing this, you're getting a treat here because it, it's breaking my protocol, which is never paint anything alone. And breaking protocol seems to be helping people out. And it's, uh, people have liked, liked the last Roman Legionary video, so here I am again, breaking protocol. Plus, I'm just out of steam. I'm try currently trying to quit caffeine. Um, just only drink it in the mornings. Limit myself to the mornings. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just painting the bandages. Or the bandage portion of the club. What's holding on. And then, when I'm done, after I get just enough, I'm going to wipe some of this off. And I'm just going to paint the tips of the rock. I'm just going to dry brush this on the rock. And that's kind of your, st that's like my stone triad there as you can see and for once it looks like I'm staying in frame just a little bit better and um, hit that 
and that's that's basically my rock triad. So I'm gonna hurry up and do the uh, fingernails, and uh, we'll be back with uh, dip, with the next color. So this step is going to be really really dumb. Uh, I'm gonna do these two colors together. It's the snake bite leather. That's a base for the wood. So again, goes on the club. Take our brush, get it ready. Bam. Just gonna be a quick dry brush. Ugh, of course, too much on the brush, but that's okay. So go up in there. But you can see what it does is it just brings up the wood one more color. This is just my wood formula. A lot of people just use desert yellow and call it good. I'm like almost to that point, but problem is I have so many models that are painted the same that kind of locks me in, in terms of creativity and what I can and can't do. So usually I end up having to perform the latter. Um, and if this, I'm just going to go in there real quick and wherever I can see wood in between the bandages I'm just going to use this one color because I'm going to use a smaller brush to put the uh, the bone color on the bandages. So, oh, we got to get up in there, bam. All right. And that's done. That was easy. Next color up is we're just going to hurry up and paint the fabric. And that is going to be Mephiston base. You're not going to see it that much. You've got to be really looking at this model to find the loincloth on them anyway. But that's okay. We're just going to go down, get the fabric real quick. Switch brushes to our zero and make sure we get the top portion of the loincloth, just the part that we can see. Up near the middle, and near the leg. cloth is almost done. It just needs one more shade and that's the scarlet. Those two colors can just be put away now because they're done permanently. I don't need them anymore. Um, the eyes are going to be scarlet so and we're not even to that point yet so we're going to do our next color which is um, basically our metallics are going to come into view now. Um, we're going to highlight our silver with mithril silver and that'll be the next step. So off camera, I just hurry up and I highlighted all the angles in the interior of the miniature that you really can't see that it had me whipping it, the uh, miniature off the screen so that I can see it. But we're just going to hurry up and we're going to beat our silver real fast onto the steel as quickly as we can because this is an easy step to do. Just very quickly bring our steel up and see what that does. And you, always, you also have to go around off screen and make sure that you do the, uh, the, the edges of some of these plates that they've got on there. Um, there's, there's a little bit of room for some more detail on these plates. You know, you could put your free hand on here. I've often thought about doing that, but again, I'm going for speed and I don't have a lot of time anymore. You know, I just, I get home and all I want to do is sit around and do nothing lately. I think it's the holidays. The holidays take everything out of me. They really do. That and I want to do other projects. I don't want to paint goblins anymore. I think by the time you're done with a big project like goblins, you're just done painting in general. You know, I had to do a bunch of touch-up work on my, uh, on my, on my rabble just to get them ready to be uh, 
spray painted with clear coat and everything, so had to do a lot of that. That was my entire weekend last week, 60 guys, and not to mention unit fillers. And painted the organ, uh, I keep calling it the organ gun, I know it's the war trombone. Again, we're going to go down, make sure all our plates are on. Again, that's why I use the colors that I use. Because they're easy, they're docile, I know what they're going to do every single time. And pretty much we're getting there. Don't see any plates that I'm missing. I could hit up there again, though. Again, you want clean edges because we're going to be painting away from each plate individually when we highlight the flesh. Get the zero out and get that wrist really quick. Again, if you can't reach something, you can always switch to a smaller brush. Anyway, my new setup for doing these videos is going to be a two camera feed. The camera I'm using is going to be on me so that I could talk to the camera. I feel that I have no power whatsoever in a video when I'm not talking to the camera directly. Some people are good narrators. I'm a doer. I have to talk to the camera. As you can see, I'm using two water pots, one to wash off the initial uh, metallic and then just one to, that's slightly cleaner water. But that was Mithril Silver. You see what that did, that just sort of brought up the color on the silver for the highlight and everything, and you can see, you can just basically see it pop. I always just dry brush one and two, and I leave a little bit shining through, so you, you just, you get your low light, which is down here, and then you get your highlight, which is up here. And I don't know, again, don't know how well you'll see that. But, next color is a little bit of glorious gold. You already see the two plates that's going on. We gotta be careful because this sucker is loaded. As a matter of fact, for once it's not exploding out. I can't shake this paint because if I shake it, it just blows up everywhere. I'll take a little bit. And it's always easiest for me when I'm using gold to just get it on, wipe it off, and then start on the edges. Start on an edge. And then work it on. And I can come back, and again, I have to layer this up, so I can come back and do it again. And depending on how much I want, I can leave that there, and it'll have a more bronze color. Or I could layer it again. Like I, like I said, I've got to layer this up again, so we're going to start on an edge. I'm just going to work it on. And it makes a very, very healthy gold color. I really like this combination. This is one combination that works for me across the board. This is the actual final highlight on the 50-50 when I do hoplites for their bronze and everything. This is the fine this is the final color on the triad of those two of those colors. I start with 10 bits usually on the hoplite bronze. There we go. Yeah, but I think uh, once I have the camera set up, because I have a, I have tables galore that in, in the laboratory and around the house that I can use. Like the TV trays are just primarily for, which is what I'm using now, is one TV tray holds the camera. I'm going to use a desk clamp, and that way it can just, I could be a little bit closer to where I want to be. And one problem I have is that if it's on the same table, is that I'll be transferring motion constantly to the camera. So I'll have one camera looking at me where I can talk to you, the audience, and I'll have the other camera pointed at the miniature in about the same angle, but slightly better. Yeah, I think we're holding it about there. There we go. So as you can see, the gold is done. We put that back up in the uh, storage area there, and we're going to go to our flesh tones next and uh, this is a 50-50 mixture that we're going to be using so give me a second to get it ready 
So I want you guys to see me prepare the mixture that I'm about to do here. So when I do a mixture, I always start with the darker color first. And I dig out from underneath. I get some paint on my brush. And we're going to go and we're going to put it in there. Then you only need a little bit of the moot because the moot is actually a little bit more potent. No, nope. looks like you need the same amount. All right, now that was two drops of each, and this is our flesh highlight color, okay? Two drops of each, and you make sure you get about the same amount on the brush, and this you want, you want to put it on in bold strokes. All right, so, you know, we go across our fingers. This is only going about, I'm going to say, at the uh, top parts of the miniature the muscles, the parts of the miniature that we can see. You see what I'm doing on the hand there. I'm going to go to the tops of the and bottoms of the bicep and tricep here, the elbow. I'm going to get it on the bicep. We're just the just the biggest patches of green that we can see. We're not going to worry too much about the abdominal muscles because again on this model you can't see them. So when we wipe off most of the paint onto the fingers and the bigger and the parts that are more in the light and everything and we use up most of the paint because this is a wet mix. Um, I keep my uh, paint, I, the reason why I don't need to use a wet palette as much as anybody else is because I keep my paints watered down with uh, with Windex. Heavily watered down with Windex and water. Like it, it's non-stop. I'll go through and I'll do my paints and I'll, I'll do a paint check and see what I need to throw away and what I need to get. And, you know, I'm not painting enough to warrant just having one of those full-time hanging around in my refrigerator. For what? A couple of extra drops of paint that I want to save? I'm a baller. If I, need to go buy a, if I need to go buy some paint, I'll buy some paint. But you can see what the green's doing. It's warping the skin up one shade. Just very... It's almost going... Uh, it's almost before yellow. If I was going to do another uh, highlight on this, it would be moot green mixed with just a little bit of yellow. But that I, I usually reserve that skin tone for like goblin bosses and everything. For what we're doing here, it's working just fine. So when I get this on, and so now that I've wiped off most of it, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the chest area and I'm just going to get this on the abs. He's got those six-pack troll abs. He's got prison abs. Been doing the same regiment I've been doing, except for his waist is smaller than mine. Little in the middle, just like the song. Guys like big butts, and I cannot lie, but you, a lot of women, they forget about the little in the middle part on that lyric there. You gotta be little in the middle. Um, so you gotta have an hourglass figure, not a figure of a snowman, per se. Anyway, that's the green, that's the mixture. A drop, one, a drop, two, a drop, one, a drop, two. And that's how I get the, uh, and I, I've still got a lot of paint in there. But that's usually, that's how I keep my paints wet. And that's how I get a little bit of longevity out of them. I have the paints that I like to be dry, I don't put as much Windex in. And I have the paints that I need to be wet. Green is one paint that I usually like to be wet because I use a lot of it. I paint a lot of green skin. I painted a lot of green skins in my day. So we're gonna hurry up and finish off camera and we'll be back. So the next color in our queue is Evil Sun Scarlet. Now we're gonna use the smaller brush for this. We're just gonna hurry up, highlight the loincloth and everything, which I've forgot to mention. I think I already did that off camera. Uh, no, I did not. So we're just gonna hurry up and do our loincloth real quick. Make sure we highlight the parts of the loincloth that we can see. And just drag that down. The next portion here, we're not doing the eyes, we're doing the tongue. We're just gonna make sure that we get in there and do our tongue on this guy. Yep. I'll get a little itty bitty tongue there. Little tongue action with Mr. Troll Face here. And that's uh, that's about the end of our scarlet red besides eyeballs. The last color we're gonna do um, here 
is Vomit Brown. Oh, wait a minute. Let's bring that into the camera. Dodge on. Mm. Uh, Vomit Brown. And we're going to get our uh, little flat brush for that, the Vallejo dry brush. I actually like this thing. I mean, I wear it. The reason why I don't usually keep these in my stable is because I wear them out so much. But they're just horror brushes, basically. And we're just going to hurry up and highlight our base. Just like so. Bam. I'm not going to be afraid of it either. Because again, wherever the paint gets thick or too thick, we can just put grass. So this is like, this should be the easiest, most nonchalant point of your day. And I can also take a little bit of that and I put that on the wood. I put that at the very edges, kind of like, uh, just keep dragging it on there. That also goes on the wood. And once you wash the wood, it actually kind of cracks a little bit. It gets into the cracks and um, it just, it looks like uh, chopped up wood, basically, that's been treated. You can actually go one more step with bleach, but with a uh, desert yellow, but I never do. It's just this is the way my uh, wood has been forever. Uh, just on the parts that I can see. Get rid of most of it. There we go. And get a little bit of it on the bottom of the loincloth. So Vomit Brown's done, Mr. Vomitorium. And now we're to Tooth and Nail, which is one of my favorite parts. Tooth, Nail, and Rope. Again, we switch back to the size zero. go in there and you can barely see the teeth as you can see there and I think this one actually got better after I fucked with the camera again this guy barely see the teeth but once you pick them out they kinda just pop I'm gonna go in and we're gonna get the loincloth real fast it's a little bit of rope right there and again we just dot it across and five and then again same thing this guy's no wonder he's so angry he's got a thong made out of rope he's got a rope up his ass Crying out loud. And then we go to the bandages. This is what kind of picks our bandages out. So we're just going to go across each one with this color. And you always got to start on the side. So we're going to be with this color for a minute. But you're going to see me work down a side. And then, because when you go into a bigger patch of bandage, that's when you dry brush it. But here you just have to pick out what you can see. Or what you did not destroy with your, um, with your dry brush work already. So that goes there like that. We're going to go across. We're going to do the other side real quick just like so each color we're just gonna work our way down the bandage and that's our highlight for the bandages that'll be lashing our club together just like so so we'll be back after we're done with this step so as you can see the model is basically predominantly done the only thing we haven't done are the eyes and the wash again like in the last video, I'll be washing the entire model with soft tone. You can see that the uh, bandages have been picked out. The uh, soft tone is going to go to work inside the crevices on those bandages. And it's also going to go to work down here and it's going to make the club look very dirty, very, very uh, 
very, it's going to make it look ugly. And I like looking, making things like a club look ugly, especially when it's made out of wood. Um, if I was doing Doom Divers, the recipe would actually be changed. It would be Agrax Earthshade, or, uh, it would or it'd actually be black, and then I'd be highlighting up on the wood. But since there's so little wood that you can see, there's really no point in doing that. So we're just going to hurry up and finish this model really fast. We're, and for that, we need a big brush. So here we go. And what we don't use, it's just going to go in. So bam. Speak silently and carry a big brush. This is the fun part. This is the fun part. It's kind of like dyeing, like with Ralph Wiggum or something. You know, you just get the model wet, nice and wet, nice even tone. And go around and down. You go all the way. That's a big back to scratch right there. I wonder how long these guys have to spend. Helping each other out. They're, uh, and then there's going to be one last step, and that's the stitching on the scars. And that's a highlight, so we don't put it on until after the wash is dried. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So we're going to hurry up and wash this model, and we'll be right back. So we've come back. I've gotten a different troll, as you can see. That other one's drying. But just real quick, the principles are the same. We're going to take our scarlet red here. We are going to take our zero and we're going to highlight our tongue really fast so that shoots out. A little bit of red. And there you can see his tongue. We are going to get our small detail brush right here. And we're just going to dot an eye if we can see it. Huh. I made a pun there. We are just going to dot an eye if we can see it. Which we can see both. So he's got two big beady red eyes. And that's a troll face. Just like that. And then as you can see here, that's a highlight. I just went over the stitching real quick with the men off. And as soon as that dries, and uh, right now this miniature is done. If I wanted to highlight the metal one more time, I could. But uh, the only thing that goes on next is our static grass. And that is it. We'll be back in the next. And there you have it, Internet. That's my guide for painting trolls. As you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until next time, keep playing, keep painting, and stay metal, my friends. And thanks for watching another episode of Hobby Wango Tango.